Land subsidence used to be a problem that was mostly confined to coastal areas. But over the past decade, inland land subsidence has become a major issue, particularly in Yunling and Zhanghua counties. This phenomenon not only threatens the safety of the high-speed railway, but also underscores a much more real danger pertaining to local groundwater tables and agriculture. Here's our Sunday In-Depth report. At Yunlin's Tuku Township, National Chenggong University is working with the Water Resources Agency to develop a land subsidence prevention group. Changes to magnetic rings in monitoring wells identify the degree of land subsidence. Land subsidence affects entire areas. This makes it difficult to figure out the degree of subsidence of a particular location. A decade ago, an FTV episode of Hall of Descent addressed the issue of coastal land subsidence. During the course of the investigation, one local expert said the same problems could occur inland. New monitoring data shows that the Yunlin area is experiencing subsidence due to pumping. The long-term slow nature of subsidence means that few people can actually feel it. Though it's difficult to see, Yunlin's Tuku and Huwei townships, as well as Jianghua's Shizhou and Shihu, are experiencing subsidence which is more serious than coastal regions. Over the past few years, torrential rains in Donan, Huwei, and Tuku left these areas flooded with water up to one or two meters deep. Inland subsidence can be detected by post-rain water accumulation in areas that didn't used to have stagnant water. Now we're seeing water accumulation in more places. In the past 15 years, Yunlin and Jianghua have seen subsidence reaching up to two meters. This could cause more flooding concerns. In Taiwan today, rice barns can be seen from Zhanghua, Yunlin and Jiayi to Pingdong. These are the areas where land subsidence is taking place. Climate change has already led this soil to experience some degree of salinization. But excessive groundwater pumping is exacerbating this problem. If we continue to pursue this route, in another 10 to 20 years we won't be able to grow these crops. It's hard to believe that the subsidence problem doesn't have anything to do with the 1,200 wells in Yunlin and Jianghua. Who owns some of these deep wells? They belong to the Taiwan Water Company, the Water Resources Agency, Taiwan Sugar, schools, prisons and factories. In the past, we found there were approximately 1,200 deep wells. Over the last several years, some 30 to 40 percent have been sealed. Beginning in 2011, the government began to seal deep wells in Yunlin and Jiayi, including some 350 owned by the water company. To cooperate with groundwater management for the area, we sealed this well. If we face a drought and experience third stage water restrictions with insufficient water supply, then we can make a report to the Water Resources Agency and open the well again. These 350 wells extract 150 million tons of water each year to supply households and industries. If they are sealed, many fear there will be no water for household use. Originally, in the Zhanghua and Yunlin area, a high percentage of people relied on groundwater for tap supplies. But now we are changing to cleaner water supplies such as Hushan Reservoir or the newly completed Niao Zuitan Artificial Lake. Hushan will mainly supply Yunlin, while Niao Zuitan will supply Zhanghua. Surface water will be able to supply tap water in the two counties. Some wonder if sealing off these wells can really stop land subsidence. Along the Yunlin and Zhanghua high-speed rail route, there are some 310,000 private wells, mainly used by farmers to irrigate rice fields. Nearly half of the 120 days during the first rice planting require water. Since I plant soybeans, I only need to irrigate four times. Beginning in 2014, the Council of Agriculture told farmers to convert to crops that can be grown in dry fields, where severe subsidence was a problem. Soybean income is relatively good because we use organic growing methods. 
Our costs are higher when we work a little more, but prices are good. There are also subsidies for having converted crops, for organic farming, and to purchase organic fertilizers. Though the government may be doing what it can to solve this problem, some believe it isn't doing enough. Now our problem is that industrial zones are expanding. The combination of new industrial zones and traditional industrial zones is creating high demand for water. The Ministry of Economic Affairs should sit down with the Ministry of the Interior and have a discussion about central Taiwan's serious water shortage. When you conduct regional planning, city planning or promotion of industrial zones, the Ministry of the Interior should have the authority to block plans. Land subsidence in Zhanghua and Yunlin is approaching crisis proportions with local authorities and other organizations putting forward numerous suggestions. But some believe that slow decision-making on the part of the central government may compromise public safety, leading to a future crisis for property owners and farmers.